want you forgetting one thing about it, that uh, the European Union is planning to integrate the forces across the... Oh, it's planning, yes. No, I haven't forgotten at all. Uh, the European Union, it, it, it's quite likely that the start of a war would be heralded by some form of collapse of the European Union, assuming the UK doesn't pull out after, assuming we don't get a sensible government uh, after the spring, which we might not. Um, the European Union has been planning for years. Indeed, that goes all the way back to the 1940s, when the original proposal was there to merge the French and German armed forces. That, that has been a European wet dream for decades. But they're uh, they are a long, long way from achieving it. Now, in relation to Europe, the French have indicated privately, and the Italians, that they would remain neutral. Uh, the balance of power looks like this. Um, if a third war breaks out, it will be Belarus, Russia, Poland, Denmark, and Britain on the side of the Allies, Ireland, France, the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, Italy, Austria, uh, and uh, Hungary would remain neutral. The Czechs, the U.S. will remain the latest word I'm getting in Washington. The Americans understand what's happening. The Americans have deep strategic thinkers, and I sort of people I would meet in Washington. The Americans are figuring that they would remain neutral unless and until a right-wing Republican administration were elected after 2013. So the Americans are saying to us, guys, we're out until January 2013. So don't start the war without us. The Americans would prefer a war to start after January 2013 with, say, President Palin, uh, who's up there to shoot. She's as much into shooting Germans as into shooting Moose, I expect. Uh, the Italians have said privately they will stay out. Um, the Greeks will stay out. Uh, the Turks will stay out, uh, unless there's a change of government in Turkey, in which case they might join in on, on our side. The Israelis would probably take advantage of major combat operations in Western Europe to do a bit of cleaning up and a bit of housekeeping down uh, in Gaza, possibly whack the Syrians who are backed by the Germans. Iran? Uh, Iran. Iran well, Iran is ultimately controlled by Germany. Uh, the, it was the Germans who arranged for Iran to get its nuclear weapons. The Germans have, uh, sorry, the Iranians have at least 18 nuclear weapons at the moment. Uh, but the, uh, the Iranian regime is very unstable and the private indications we're getting from the Iranian army is the Iranian army are quite content to take over, install the Shah, and keep Iran out. So I think the Iranian army would prefer to keep Iran uh, neutral. The Sheikhs are very interesting. Uh, we're getting indications and noises that the Sheikhs would like to join the party. Uh, they would probably like, prefer to reunite Czech Republic and Slovakia, and both the Sheikhs and the Slovaks have a few scores to settle with the Germans as do the Poles. Now, I'm not saying this is all going to happen. What I'm saying is that if we don't get our act together, if we don't see some serious statesmanship, which we did not see in the run-up to World War I and World War II, then there will be a war, because the only way to shut down German intelligence, if we don't have proper statesmanship, is to military occupy Munich. And you can't military occupy Munich without defeating Germany first. You can't just install troops in Munich. I'm afraid the Germans would get very upset. Peter? I'd like to make two statements. The first is that I Speak up. Sorry. I fully agree with you that we're going to have a war. I don't know about the timeline, but I would suggest that certainly within the next five to ten years. Yep. I suggest it will be a world war. I suggest that it will be pan-European on the scale of Bosnia rather than international. I do not believe we have the finances or the will politically or socially to have a war with Germany. I just don't believe the British people are up to it. I don't think the Germans want one either. So I would disagree with your analysis on the causes of such a war, but I would 100% guarantee that we're going to have one. Thank you. Uh, can I just comment very quickly, Chairman? I, I don't think the German people wanted war in 1914 or 39 either. No. The tragedy of Germany, I quite like the Germans. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm almost as fond of the Germans as Bomber Harris was. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually very fond of Jerry. I actually get on quite well with Jerry on a personal level. I got on fine with Marcus Wolf, for example. Um, I'm prepared to accept a price. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, Jer the Jerry's... I don't think the German people wanted war in 1914 or in 1939. German, the tragedy for the German people is that from the time that Germany was created, it's never been controlled by the German people, nor ultimately has Germany ever been run in the interests of the German people. Uh, I absolutely agree. I don't think the Germans want war. Nor is Britain. No, I agree. As for, I agree. As for the British people, as for the British people, the same was being said in 1939. Now, we'll be up for a We're always up for a war with Germany. If one more speaker after you.
Can you make a comment on the, sh the Finnish timber ship that was hijacked? Yes. And it was Moss Side. They, apparently it was Moss Side had something to do with it because they were taken back to Russia. Yeah, the, the, this was the Arctic Sea. Yeah, I was partly involved in that, the, the, uh, in spotting what was going on. The MV Arctic Sea was carrying stolen nuclear material out of a Russian facility, uh, but the nuclear material was going to Iran, and the fear was it would be handed over to Al-Qaeda. So Iran was very much involved. Russian, the, the, it's still a little bit hazy, but Russian special forces appear to have gained control of the vessel off um, the province of Gotland in Sweden, in the Baltic. And then the Russians appear to have had a strategy, which may not have been the right one, of running the vessel through to see who she was going to rendezvous with. Uh, there was then an at-sea rendezvous, and it suggested that these guys came out of Penzance. Very, very odd. There's some extraordinary activity, a little fishing village near Penzance, which is a bit unexplained at the moment. But there appears to be a fishing boat or a small boat going out to the tanker at the western end of the channel, um, not far from the Scilly Isles. Um, and there's a little fishing village near Penzance where there's been some interesting hostile intelligence activity. And that, uh, there's a further rendezvous, and it looks as though the Russians lost control of the ship. At that point, the Russians sent every naval vessel they had. They had three Akula submarines. They had... Uh, uh, a landing ship. They had all sorts of stuff. Everything they had in the Atlantic was suddenly scrambled at very short notice. Now, I was talking to the Pentagon over this one, and I know the U.S. Navy were keeping. Uh, you know, they, they suddenly, the Americans suddenly saw the board light up. Every Akula was racing across from, you know, to, to get hold of this ship. There was a panic stations, and the Russians eventually boarded the ship and regained control. But by that stage, she'd had a rendezvous with an Iranian tanker. She'd been refueled. Now, my, my intelligence analysis on this was initially denied until I said, somebody, please check the fuel logs, uh, because I think you'll find that her tanks are too high not to have been topped up. Somebody finally did that, Michael. You know what it's like. Nobody ever comes back and says, Michael, you're right. They only ever come back and say, Michael, you were wrong. But nobody came back and said I was wrong. It looks as though there was a rendezvous, and the nuclear material was offloaded onto this Iranian tanker. Now, the Iranian tanker never made it back. She was going round the Cape. She couldn't risk a run through the Red Sea because of the Israelis. Um, so she did a run, uh, she was going to do a run past Cape of Good Hope. But my belief is that one of the, sorry, we have the, the internet, people watching on the internet may not understand. We have uh, our brave local police force rushing off to catch a motorist doing 32 miles an hour, I expect. Ambulance. Oh, well, there we are. Uh, it's the NHS dashing somebody off the hospital to bump okay. them off. Uh, the, it looks as though one of the coolers. Are you still on this subject? I'm still answering. Harry, yes, I'm, uh, you've done so well to bring me out of my shell, you see. I was answering the nice lady's question. Uh, it looks as though one of the coolers banged the tanker, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure how the fire of the limit was. All I understand is the tanker and the nuclear, the nuclear material never made it back to Banda Abbas. That's Banda enough, enough time on that. Bill, just before... Bond, just, Bill. Just, <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. Right. The Come chairman on. begs leave to make just one remark. I'll be with you a moment, Alfred. Okay. And I, I support you to a great extent. My remark is, from what's been said, you must understand the people of the countries of this world never want war. <laughs> Not the people who want the war. That's all I, I agree. <laughs> what, what's exactly will trigger this war? Ah, no, that. Ah, well, the <laughs> uh, we have we have the the NHS are very active this afternoon, bumping off more grannies. Um, the uh, sorry, I'm not a huge fan of the NHS. You can probably tell. Now, uh, two questions here. Uh, which people on people listening on the internet may not have picked up. Uh, the first question is. Um, Remind me, first. What will trigger? Yes, what will trigger? There are a number of triggers. Wars are always start, started by Germany. That's the basic rule. If you have a world war, it's always started by the Germans. Now, I'm not saying they're going to invade Belgium, they're not going to invade Poland. It will be some stupid, stupid intelligence operation gone very badly wrong. Now, the Madeleine McCann kidnap we, we got very, very close at times to doing it. Uh, because there were submarines involved in the Madeleine kidnap. Uh, I can tell you that one of the submarines involved in shifting the poor girl around was intercepted by a Russian sub and taken down off the coast of Norway. So we actually have naval incidents at sea. The Arctic Sea was one.